Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video review. Uh, this one's going to be more of a brief, a little more brief than my past entertainment box reviews. Uh, but this one's going to be on the WDTV Live from Western Digital. Um, obviously I've done a lot of reviews on the Apple TV. I've done a few of those myself over a couple of their generations of products. And to be honest, still today the Apple TV takes care of most of my uses. But Personally, I do have a lot of files that I like to do, uh, uh, obviously shoot with my video camera as I am right now, and I like to be able to show those to people. Uh, with the Apple TV, there is a workaround, obviously with an iPad or an iPhone or a Mac, or, and broadcasting it via AirPlay to the TV. But there are other pro possibilities of getting a hold of that, and this box right here is one of those ways. Uh, the thing that the WTV TV Live is, is it's a smart TV box. So you get Netflix, you get YouTube, you get Hulu, you get everything. One thing that is actually noticeably missing from this is Amazon Instant, which I really thought there would be on this specific box, but it isn't. Um, and uh, at the same cost as Apple TV and other boxes on the market today, there's benefits to getting this, and there's costs to getting this in terms of what you're actually going to get and how well it's actually going to work for you. I actually purchased this specifically because of one fact, one fact only, is that this box plays about any file format on the market. There's not very many that it doesn't play. So whether it's AVC HD, uh, MKV, DivX, XFID, AVI, it plays it. MP4, uh, obviously MP3s and music files. There's you can get a hold of your photos and actually view them right on the on the TV as well. And that's what I'm basically going to more show you. I will show you some of the other services that are available as well. But let's get over here and show you the little box. So this is my little WD TV Live box. If you can kind of see from this little box here. Uh, I mean, in volume, it's probably one and a half to two times as big as the Apple TV, to give you a, uh, an idea on that. has very similar connections on the back. Uh, however, one thing, or, there are two items that are different from the WGTV Live as opposed to the Apple TV in that, A, it can connect to a standard definition TV because there is an AV cable, and B, or two, <laughs> there's a USB port on the front that not only can you plug in one of these bad boys and play media directly off a USB media device but also you can actually plug in a keyboard wireless or wired right into the USB port and use it for easy searching within the confines or entering usernames and passwords makes it a lot more easy than using this because this is the remote that comes with the unit and I am not very excited about this little guy it's it feels it's made out of plastic and it feels like it's made out of plastic now obviously you compare this to other one other uh, uh, remotes on the market uh, Apple TV blows this one out of the water in my opinion it's a lot simpler to use but it's a lot higher quality uh, the Google TV boxes by Sony much better remote than this of course that comes with a keyboard built in so you wouldn't even need the USB port for that but um, I'm just not happy with this remote it just it's too clunky too slow uh, there is it doesn't, it just doesn't, you know, when you hit a key, there's a lapse before it actually does anything on the device. Now, obviously, that could be the device, but in the, like in the case of the Apple TV, the remote that comes with the Apple TV is very responsive. When you hit the button, it's go, it goes. In the Apple TV, you can actually have it learn any other remote with other push rubbery button type remotes. It does the exact same thing. So, I don't know if it's so much the device as it is the remote. And there's my dog. He, I guess he wants to go outside. Anyway. So that's the remote um, and that's the device, things that it can do. So obviously what I wanted to show you real quick was a couple of the video things. So first, this is the USB stick. I'm going to actually just plug it right in here and here in a moment, once it starts reading everything that's on there, you'll, it'll actually probably start propagating how many videos and stuff I have on there. I only have two videos on there, but I guess right now it's not actually reading from that device. So oh, there it is. So I hit videos, it went right over to it. If it does, it didn't do that and it came up with select source, you can actually just hit local storage and that's the USB port. Um, so these are just a couple of videos. I wanted to just show you a couple of different formats. One's an MP4, the other one's an AVC HD directly off my Sony camcorder actually, which comes up as an MT2, or M2TS or MTS file. Um, and so this is actually raw, right out off of the camcorder itself. Um, 
just put on my computer and allowed to play right here on the TV through the USB port. So uh, this is just, I just wanted to briefly show you that obviously it can handle pretty heavy ABC HD, which a lot of computers don't even have enough power to do this, uh, at least older computers. So, but just a quick video of my daughters and stuff and actually I have been some silly string them. But anyway, um, but that's the ABC HD. Here's the MP4. This is actually raw right off of my GoPro in 1080p, 60 frames per second. High quality GoPro video. Um, me tubing in the backyard and about to go off a little jump and take a nice little tumble. So, there's raw GoPro footage at a pretty decent frame rate and uh, full 1080p. So, um, but that's the same thing. And what I can do is I can do, I'm going to head actually back. And there's actually a back button on the remote. And I'm going to actually go over to another, the, the fact that I'm actually going to be using more than anything else. And that is, uh, let's see. Yes, I want to browse a different source because right now it's on local. And I'm going to go to uh, Network Share. Network Share is obviously going off of my network. Uh, I have a Mac, so you can also do Windows. And actually, in the facts, the Mac shares weren't, wasn't working very well. But now they got it working pretty good on the new update. Um, looks like my Mac share is not there. Interesting. But there it is. There we go. Intr I guess I just should allow it to update. Um, I'm going to go ahead and enter my username and password in and we'll go from there. So here we are. We're now in. Um, I actually connected my keyboard real quick and I just hit the space bar, of course. Um, and typed in my uh, username and password rather than take my 10 minutes on this dang thing and get it in there. Or I guess one minute, but whichever. I just didn't want to wait. Um, but here's basically right off my Mac Mini my shared folders, which I have a whole bunch. I'm going to go into my media folder. That's actually my media hard drive actually uh, all right and it takes its time i guess oh it's an external hard drive so it's actually booting up i can hear it back there all right i'm gonna go to my media folder within there uh let's actually go to family i can actually show you the same video if i really wanted to Obviously, sometimes, like I said, the one thing that I'm, I'm going to say more than anything else on this specific um, device is the fact that it's not the fastest. It, it doesn't matter if it's going off my network or if it's going to Netflix or if it's going to any of the above. Uh, it just doesn't have a whole lot of pep to the box. Um, so this is the, the same, it should be the same GoPro video, I believe, that I had before. And so now I'm actually streaming it off my computer, um, which is on a USB hard drive on my computer. But I mean, you can see there it has about the same uh, video. I did notice that with the really high bitrate stuff, every so often it would start getting choppy and I'd have to hit pause, let it build up. But if I paused it right away and let it build up and get a little bit of a buffering ahead of itself, then it did fine. But I did notice that, especially with the really heavy stuff. Um, Another thing, uh, you, you know, there's, I mean, it's the same thing with any, with, with any of the videos, to be honest. There's not a whole lot of stuff that I can't do. So the same thing goes with photos. Uh, if I go into uh, photos, let it build up here. Let's see here. Oh, sidewalk, when I have my sidewalk and driveway done. So you can actually pull up pictures. I don't even know what this picture is of. Oh, there we go. But there's when they're ripping out my driveway. But you can actually, you know, pull up pictures, pull up photos, pull up music, pull up anything. Uh, and that's, to be honest, that's the one thing that I'm actually going to be holding on to this for is specifically so I can actually get a hold of my content without having to use my iPad or anything like that. Um, that said, the iPad version way of doing it is easier. Um, and it's a lot more responsive. And the one big thing, I, the real big grab I actually have about the WDTV is is boot time. Because when it you know shuts itself off or when you turn it off, when you're not using it, uh, it takes a while to boot. I mean like a minute to boot up, which is ridiculous in my opinion. It should be snappy. If you unplugged it from power and booted it, hard booted it, I can understand that. I really can. But when you're booting it from 
a, a warm start, I guess. It takes a little while for it to boot up, which is a big regret. My biggest thing is is that if I compare the Apple TV to the WTV Live, the Apple TV is much peppier. They put a much better processor in it. Um, because even when I, like, and I'll show you here in a second here, if I go to the services, and this is obviously where you're going to watch stuff from Netflix and other online services, um, Netflix, if I just click on Netflix, for instance, you know, this has nothing to do with my media files because it's not coming off of my media files at all. I have a 30 megabit connection here at my home, so I have plenty fast internet. It's not the internet at all. It, everything has to do with the box and the box alone. I've already logged into Netflix and now it's just taking its sweet little time booting into it. And it doesn't even fast enough to even put it in my little picture that I actually have for myself. Which, there you go, finally came up. So I click on me. Um, and you'll notice actually when I'm street, when I'm actually go, cycling through the... See, I just, I mean, it just takes a second for it to actually go. It, it's, it, it just has no fluid motion to it. Um, and that's my biggest right. And it's the same thing if I go to, um, you know, Netflix. Okay, Netflix. Maybe it's Netflix servers. Okay. Well, if it's the same thing when I go to YouTube, YouTube should be, like, up. Because, in my opinion, I, I don't really have problems with YouTube. Especially if I'm on my, my Apple TV, my iPad, my iPhone, whichever. Um, I don't really have problems. It doesn't really take very long to boot it up, boot up the application. But in this case... So we're not quite up yet. We're still waiting. And now I would say we're up. It just, it really lags. It's a dog when it comes to uh, how fast. Here, I just clicked down once. You know, let's go to film and animation. It, and it, it just doesn't have any fluid motion to it. You know, I, I don't want to keep comparing it to a different box because this isn't a video on a comparison between boxes. This is just, but I have a hard time not doing it because it's that slow. So for those people out there that are looking for a box that can do about anything, including playing stuff off your network, the WTV, uh, DTV Live is definitely your box. In my opinion, if you're going to get this box, eventually look at upgrading for your streaming services to a separate box. The Roku 3, the Apple TV, the Sony... Uh, Google TV, all three of those boxes are fantastic. They're great in their own right, but they do a lot better with the streaming. I think especially the Roku 3 and the Apple TV, they're, they're boxes that are that's specifically what they're designed to do, and they do it very, very well. Um, this box has a lot more services uh, in terms of the fact that you can play stuff off your local media. The Roku 3, however, can do very, very similar stuff. Um, it doesn't play near as many formats as this guy. This is a powerhouse when it comes to being able to play about any format on the market. But it's a dog in terms of everything else. So while it's great, they might, you know they put a processor in there that can decode about any video uh, codec, but it's really slow in everything else. And I, I just it, it screams slow. So uh, I have a hard time recommending this box to anybody that's not looking for the specific purpose of um, playing a wide variety of networked media or media off a hard drive. Uh, so, yeah. So for a change of pace, I thought I'd, I'd come outside to the wonderful outside in my sure sleeve shirt when it's really nice and cold out and say, that's my review of the WDTV Live. Uh, hope you got something out of it. And like I said, I don't want to plan on getting rid of it right now. Uh, I do have use for it, but it's not my main source of entertainment. And it probably and uh, definitely will never be my main source of entertainment. Maybe in their next iteration they'll get a processor that is fast enough for my standards, but it's not near there right now. So, with that said, comment below, subscribe above, let me know what's going on. If you have any recommendations for future videos, please message me directly with YouTube. Or if you'd like, go to the techgucci.com. And that's our direct website, my direct website, I guess. I haven't really done any much, very much with it, but it is a place where you can contact me through there as well. So, with that said, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoy this video, and watch me on my next one. So, thanks again!